All right, here we go. Okay. Uh -huh. Yay. Okay, Bula, Bula, Vinak, everyone. Thanks for uh, logging in. Uh, Aloha from Hawaii and Kiora from New yeah. Zealand. Okay. All right, so here we are, and let's listen to this beautiful song. And this song, Nirmala, I know will make us both homesick. Uh -huh. I was almost that. in tears. I was almost in tears. The humanity that you see in that, you know. Yes, that's absolutely. What I, my, I knew that's what we show. Yeah. Yes, I knew straight away. I knew you're gonna like that song. <laughs> uh, one of my favorite songs, and it's just so wow. beautiful uh, to see. Yeah, the the songs, yeah, yeah. The, the words, it means so much. So just would like to acknowledge um, the artist Tumbunda Veseyaki. Katarina yeah, yeah. Turanga Kavivi and yeah. uh, the music engineer Etonia Junior Lotte, and also the gentleman who put the music together, Manu Railoa, and the Ndokin Doki Studio. Such a beautiful mm -hmm. work that they did I for that beautiful song. Did you enjoy yeah. that? Yeah, I did very much. And it's 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 marvel, you know, how far forward people are moving, you know, yes. and the technology they are using. <laughs> yes, definitely, yeah. definitely. Yeah. Yes, Bula Bula Vidaka Nirmala Balram. Um, how are you today? Oh, I am. It's a bit of a cloudy day here, but I'm feeling really good. <laughs> oh, very nice. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, not the best of health, but um, that's all hidden away in my leg. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm glad you are in good hands. You've been well looked after. Yeah. Yes very well looked after i mean wow. lucky to be in this country you know mm. very much so wow well done well done mm. yes. mm -hmm. and how long will you be um on leave before you return to work uh, nirmala in total it'll be three months so i've got i'm a i'm a bio i have got a bionic uh, leg now so when i go to the airport it's going to go Bleep, bleep. <laughs> I see. I'm, I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> oh, wow. Yes. Yeah, three, three months of staying home and just, um, yeah, reading a lot and, mm. um, and then starting on this uh, course that I'm doing. Uh, I'm planning for the future and mm. starting with this course that, and then hopefully, you know, there's time, there's life. Wow, <laughs> there, that's, there, is that's courage, there is courage to go on. Wow. <laughs> so we just have to wait and see. Yeah. yeah it's important. Uh, like you, I can see that I say that always. Like if you, I also love the idea of giving back. You know, we have got received so much in our lives. It's time to give back. Wow. And even though I'm going back to university, it's the whole idea behind it is going, giving back, giving back knowledge uh, to the future generations. Yeah. yeah. That is so good. Yes, Vinaka, Vinaka Vakalevu, Nirmal. For those of you listening in, Vinaka Vakalevu for joining in. Uh, those of you joining in from uh, the USA, Bole Vinaka, Bole Vinaka Ndaku, Sikeli, and Bole Vinaka uh, to all, everyone listening into from Fiji uh, and Australia and around the world. Again, we are on uh, the roll in interviewing uh, some of our women uh, who have uh, contributed greatly to Fiji. And uh, we are so fortunate, if you remember, uh, last year we celebrated the International Women's Day and we invited uh, Nirmala Balram, who is our guest today, uh, again from last year, but she has an, a few updates uh, from <laughs> the last time that we have spoken. So maybe to kickstart our talent, Noah, uh, just to share a little bit about yourself, Nirmala, uh, of where you were raised in Fiji, and then we'll take it from there to bring it to Wellington, where you are now. Okay. Um, from Bar. Bar Town, born in uh, Bar Methodist Hospital. <laughs> Spent my primary school at St. Teresa's in Bar and then went to Suva for high school at Dudley High School. And then I went on a cultural journey to India for four years uh, to discover myself and to understand uh, where 
my heart was, where my ancestors were. And uh, on my, while living in India, I realized that, you know, I belonged and yet I did not belong. It's like living in a foreign land. And uh, so it was uh, important to recognize that uh, Fiji was my homeland. Fiji was the place where my, the ancestors I know, they are there, they are there and they will be there forever. So that recognition made me feel like this is home. And of course, uh, with my husband's um, career, I, I traveled wide and then um, different countries and started in Wellington, actually. And every time I went back to Fiji, I felt that renewed feeling of joy of being home, you know. And uh, so I never got bored staying in Fiji. And then... Um, Next thing, um, I'm back in Wellington after about 25 years and have been here for 20 years now. Wow. It was it was February 2002 when I arrived in Wellington <laughs> as a diplomatic spouse. And uh, 2005, I joined the Museum of New Zealand, Te Papa Tongarewa, where I started looking after the Maori and uh, Pacific collections. Mm. And right now... I am the sole conservator for three-dimensional objects at Te Papa. So, yeah, interesting journey, uh, lots of learning and uh, learning about different cultures, you know, learning about all the different cultures in the Pacific yeah. and especially uh, Maori culture, you know, being immersed in that. I've been very fortunate and the strength you find in that uh, you can transfer to any other culture, you know? Mm. Yeah. And I see that happening in Fiji too, where people are feeling, and there's a wave of change around the world, actually, mm. where people are going back to their traditional ways of doing things, acknowledging their traditional ways of doing things. And to me, I feel that is very important, especially now with the, the situation we have around the world. Yeah, that's... Uh... Yeah. Wow, that's amazing. Yes, if you're not going to for uh, acknowledging yeah, your Fiji heritage, I've got the map here of Fiji and I'm sure it'll bring back some memories to you. So this is Mba over there. So this is your hometown, Nirmala. Yeah, yeah. I want to go home. <laughs> Planning uh, that, that, but uh, yeah, hopefully it'll happen soon in the future. Right, right. Yeah. Beautiful. So you went to school here and uh, for work you moved to Suva and which are the places that you moved to? Oh, for our first posting was here in New Zealand uh, right. and then uh, we went away to the UK right. and uh, spent a year there and then uh, when came back, so it was going back and forth, but the countries we've uh, lived in, mm. uh, the other ones is New York, uh, in, and then um, Malaysia, <laughs> Malaysia, Australia, and back here. Uh, so actually living in countries is totally different from visiting. We went uh. back to visit New York and it was not the same, you know. You, um, you become a tourist. And the tourist doesn't get into the real vibe of the city. Yes. But I used to be there back. Yeah. Yeah. Because uh, I have a son who was born there. So took him back to where he was born. <laughs> yes. yeah. uh, that's beautiful. How many children do you have all together, Nirmala? Uh, I have three children and six grandchildren. <laughs> oh, three that boys, is three girls. Uh, and their age range is also quite big from 16 to four. <laughs> so you must be enjoying being a grandmother and a blessing, yeah? Yeah, I do. I do really enjoy that. Um, and sort of feel like I'm learning with them, you know, just like I learned with the children, I'm learning with the grandchildren. It uh, doesn't mean that I, I have to be the typical grandmother, you know, that old woman with the... <laughs> No, uh, I, I want to inspire them. I want to feel like when I when I'm gone, they're going to be proud that they were my grandchildren. 
<laughs> that is so beautiful. Now, yeah. in terms of your choices of uh, of subjects when you were young, you know, like the maybe the same age as your grandchildren now, it and is. I'm sure they're so blessed to have you as a grandma. And uh, you know, you make a really good good grandmother when I watch all your photos. You know, you just <laughs> love them to bits. Uh, yeah. And what a blessing you are, Nirmala, to your family. Um, mm -hmm. Going back to Mba and with all your education that you had there, uh, mm -hmm. why did you choose the science field? So I'm going to share this fav your favorite poster uh, uh -huh. because I, I knew when I posted this on Facebook and you just loved it. And so <laughs> I made sure that I have it here for you. So I'll put it up here as an inspiration for Talanot today. Um, yeah. So what, what made you um, want to, um, you know, to choose this, uh, the science as your field yeah. of study? Mm. Uh, let's say I had no idea what science was mm -hmm. because as a child, I was just inquisitive. I wanted to know. And um, that's why my idea of science even today is different. Mm -hmm. I mean, science means someone who's, you know, investigating, inquiring, and then putting it down and for uh, recording it and checking out with other people like you know so that fear was not there i think that inquisitiveness was what actually got me into science yeah. uh with a bit of pushing from my teachers and uh, stories from my grandfather that kind of made me feel like oh there's a big world out there and mm -hmm. uh, you know i wanted to know i still remember his stories uh, today the stories mm -hmm. told about jewels in the are you there yeah. yes i'm here so when i look at this poster i see several things mm. i see a human face yes. and to me it's important a beautiful young girl i see the clouds i see the sky i imagine the sky i suppose it's just <laughs> not blue i mm. see the trees and i see water and i see that that and together all that to me is science i don't see science as being separate from us it's mm. all happening i mean they have got the three labels for science biology mm. chemistry and physics and then you have the you know the um, you have maths and then you have uh, computer science now so all these are information bases but what i feel isn't the picture is that human face mm. to me it, that's very important to have that human face so it that connects you to uh, the what they call the social sciences mm. I mean, they call them social science but we kind of don't feel they are good enough because or correct enough because they don't deal with numbers and figures and tables and but whenever someone is studying or doing research, I'm sure you would have done that. You would have drawn tables, you would have had numbers. Mm. And so it's always a mixture and, and understanding that empowers the people who are studying that science is not mm. out of your league. Science is they are working in you, within you for all the time. You just have to learn to discover that. The chemistry is working in you. The biology is definitely there. Mm -hmm. And uh, the physics is there. Like, you know, I'm doing now exercises that um, involve angles and movements for my leg that um, that actually is physics. Making those move, being able to do those physical movements includes uh, physics. But nobody, mm -hmm. no, I mean, there are people who research and write, if you move so much, this is the mm -hmm. angle, et cetera, et cetera. So for me, I think, over time, that's what's happened. I've given, decided that science, social sciences and the traditional sciences and the, you know, other sciences are not different. They're different. We, we need to find ways to connect them rather than keep them separate. Yeah. Wow. That is so wonderful to hear. Uh, yeah. As you mentioned, you have biology, chemistry and physics. But what you like about this poster is the human aspect of it, right? Yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah. That uh, uh, mind and her, her body is, show, her, within her body, all the sciences are working, you know, uh, and acknowledging that, acknowledging that's very important. 
and and what she's seeing you know all the things that surround her it's all science working around her and our old people knew about that and recorded it on the in their own ways for example if you look at you know pacific um voyaging yes Yes, you look at Pacific voyaging, people travel huge distances using what you could say scientific knowledge, you know, yeah, and yet we do not recognize it as science. And uh, I think our children need to be taught all those things so they can understand, you know, that mm -hmm. science is not something to be feared. It is uh, all within us. We just have to look around and see signs. It's the teacher who explains it better to you. That's all. <laughs> oh, that is so good. I like what you said that science is not to be feared. Yeah. Um, did you see that a lot when you were young, growing up in Bar and going yeah. to school? Was it something that was something you see a lot? Yeah, it was feared. It was, you were considered, we had a different system then. It was mm. not by choice. We had to pass exams. And if you had good marks, you were put into science. If you had, uh, I mean, unfortunately, I mm. was forced to do science in a way because mm. I personally was attracted to his literature and mm. philosophy and things like that. But, and art and craft, but you no, know, I got put into science and I enjoyed that. But what was lacking in the cheating system those days was that relationship between the rather than it was like divide and rule. <laughs> right. Keep boxes, keep you in boxes. So I mean today, many of my from my teaching days, a lot of my students are lawyers and all sorts of other things. <laughs> uh, they so I don't feel they have lost anything by doing science at school. Mm. It, it is in addition to whatever knowledge they gained afterwards, no? Wow. Yeah. And sometimes they apologize. I said, no, no, don't apologize. I'm glad you were able to extend your knowledge and do other things with the background of science, you know? <laughs> yes, wow, that is so true. Thank you so much for, uh, for sharing that, eh? because you mentioned a really good example is navigation, yeah? And uh, um, yeah. the Pacific voyaging, that is so true. Yeah. That yeah. our ancestors, they were scientists in their own right. In their own rights. I mean, it is the Western world that has written some of the history of the world and, and just not acknowledge all these things, you know. It's coming now. It's coming now. Yeah. Uh, everything apparently scientific started from uh, the Western world. It did not. It did uh. not. They were, they were, it was everywhere. You know, any part of the world you love, they, they, they had their own ancient um, ways of doing things. And they were very scientific. The only reason was that, only thing was they were not writing things down as much. And recording, their recording was different, you know, by symbols, by oral history, you know, but orally passing down some kind of some knowledge, you know, like a family would be responsible for a particular job. And they had the knowledge, the elder had the knowledge, and then the knowledge is passed on to the younger one who then becomes the elder and so on and so on. So it was like a intergenerational knowledge. And, and that was very important, equally important as just because we use fancy equipment now doesn't mean it's any better. <laughs> ah, that's true. That becomes a kind of a distraction eh? to actually see that uh, yeah. The crux of it all is the indigenous knowledge that is embedded, yeah, yeah in yeah. in that field. Wow. Yeah, and you know, people, children come into a classroom and uh, into the laboratory today, and they see all these strange things, you know. Uh, so there is fear created, whereas if they were gently, you know, taught about the ancient uh, knowledge, some. So what you would call social sciences or humanity before they entered that, they would be much more, more receptive, you know. Wow. I wish I could write the curriculum and go back to teaching wow. <laughs> children. <laughs> so you, you went to some schools in Fiji as a, a science teacher, right? Yes, yes. Wow. Uh, Do you recall some of the schools that you taught at? 
I taught at Bar, Bar, DAV College Bar, DAV Boys College Bar, uh, Suva, uh, MGM, and then I ended up at Dudley. Mm. And uh, my old, old school where I studied as a young girl. Yeah. Mm. It was my most interesting uh, class that I can never forget when I was in DAV Boys College, I had a whole classroom of boys and I was teaching them biology. And it came, we came to the section of sexual education and it was the most attentive class ever. <laughs> and there was no laugh, window of silence, no laughing, nothing. <laughs> the boys were all listening so intently, you know? So it was an subject that was interesting to them uh, and they they kind of listened with um, respect and that was important yeah and for me not to be uncomfortable you know talking to them I think that's the other thing you know the comfort of the teacher you know yeah. is important yeah absolutely so yeah so it's science it's science everywhere <laughs> yeah, that yeah. Is so true. I, I also you know, I also sometimes think about um, when you bake a cake and when you cook something else, your traditional way, when you cook traditionally, often it's by intuition. Yes. So knowledge passed from the mo uh, mother to the daughter yes. or someone and you end up with a perfect dish. Now, if oh. you're doing... When you bake a cake, you follow a way where you measure everything. <laughs> Otherwise, it does not work. <laughs> uh -huh. so, so I said, you know, yeah, I mean, to get something, the same dish to turn out every time the same way for verification, yeah, you need to follow the scientific method of doing cooking. Mm -hmm. You measure everything, and then every time the dish turns out the same. Yes. Now, on the other hand, if you cooked something uh, with intuition, your dish would be unique, a little bit different probably from everybody else. And yet it'll taste he he heavenly. It'll taste great. You know? So, yes, yeah, I often think of it like people ask me, why do you, why do you not measure? I said, you just know. You, you feel the um, ingredients. They tell you how much they, you need. <laughs> yeah. But when you're making a cake, I must measure. So I t look at it as a scientific way. And this is like intuition. <laughs> yeah, that is amazing. Yeah, that yeah. is so true. Eh? Like yeah. you you mentioned this sort of like that intuition and sort of how you feel about it. You yeah, know, yeah. this is just right. Or yeah. you need a little bit more of this. But yeah. there's no book you're looking at, but you just feel no. it. Yeah, you just feel it. And it comes out fine. It comes out great, you know. So it's like your grandmother knew the science of it without having to write it. You know? wow. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so while much. yeah, while being a scientist, I I appreciate and I like to mix. And my job is like that. As a conservator, I mix the two things. I mix cultural knowledge and with the scientific, and I never let. Um, one or the other override you know and because that would mean imposing what i learned as a scientist you know on on someone who already has a lot of knowledge about what they are doing <laughs> it's like the, yeah so that's i think the trend is coming now that recognition of uh, the the old ways of doing things, the natural, the indigenous way of doing things. Yes. Uh, it's, it's coming back. People are recognizing because with the scientific way, we are losing a lot too. <laughs> yes. 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 That is so yeah. true. I'm glad you mentioned that because yeah. when it comes to climate change, uh, yeah. uh, Nirmal, I've also seen eh, a lot of these, yeah. uh, you know, scientists are looking at indigenous ways of you know, predetermining cyclones yeah. or looking at, uh, you yeah. know, what weather is coming in when they see the behavior of birds and, yeah. and things like that. And it's really yeah. amazing when you see scientists acknowledging that. But yeah. to me, I'm always saying it's about time you should look our direction. 
Right, right, exactly. I mean, people were doing um, their own measurements and of you know the universe and things way before the word science came in, you know, and put fear in everybody. Like, unless you're a scientist, you don't know. You know? So, incorporating those two um, knowledges is very important to me and uh, my future studies. Actually, that's what I'm looking at. Um, <sighs> merging science and traditional knowledge and, and it's uh, preserving the value of things I've just been reading a book there it's, uh, it's called uh, preserving what is valued so somebody's actually gone out and done some work on finding out what things are valued and for me it's like now I take off from there and say how do you preserve that value? Wow. And, and the word preserve has multiple meanings. You know, you have to accept that preserve also means allowing it to be used, not stored away in a museum wow. because you're preserving the culture of, uh, of, pe of the people by allowing interaction with them, allowing them access. You are preserving the culture of the people. So not just the physical. And as a conservator, initially I was trained to conserve the physical. And I have learned through experience and through interaction with indigenous communities that uh, the physical is not everything. You can have something preserved, well preserved. And I, I, I talk here about, for example, the Oldman collection, which you have, mm. must be familiar with. So Oldman took, um, I mean, he never took it. He never took a boat. Um, a lot of Pacific uh, collections uh, in London. He really did. And what happened? They are preserved in pristine condition. But the provenance is not there. The, new, the usage is not there. So when you look at those objects, they're just fine objects. They're beautiful objects. But they don't lack the story. They lack the story. They lack the story. And that is, for me, of more value. I'd rather look at a broken piece and, and know its history, you know. The life it has lived. The life it has lived. And uh, one day I was at a talk and um, this man, gentleman was talking about a rock in the forest. Mm. And it was covered in moss and things like that. And he's talking about the life of this rock, you know. You know, and it always reminded me that everything has a life, you know. We forget that uh, life is restricted to things that move, etc. I mean, and the life of the rock was so amazingly told, he brought it to life. He brought it to life as, you know, we were seeing the rock. We were seeing the creatures that were sitting there on it. We were seeing the plants that were growing in it. We were seeing people pass by and touch it, you know. So a new way of telling stories is important, you know, because we humans seem to have separated us too much, mm. ourselves too much from the rest of the world, you know. Amen. Wow, that yeah. is so beautiful. I love that. that new ways of storytelling and new ways yeah. of... Um, I think uh, for me, when I work in the museum too, Nirmala, which I know you uh, find familiar, is that when you're in the storeroom, we bring in the oxygen. Yeah. yeah. We yeah. breathe, you put that life into that uh, special yeah. treasure and we lift it and we look at it and there's stories behind them. So it's yeah. not just the beauty, but you need to hear the stories. Is that right? Exactly. The life it's lived, yeah. Wow. And I, I remember looking at some war clubs, you know, and seeing all the, the teeth and imagining who was killed by that <laughs> or the marks the notches they used to make you know once they so rather than looking at it as an object uh, object to kill mm. you look at the story behind it and uh, the technology for me the technology of making those clubs in Fiji really fascinates me how the tree is nurtured to um, grow in a certain way so that you can create these amazing objects, you know? 
Mm. And they knew which trees, they knew which trees. They didn't just take any tree. They knew which one had the flexibility and the strength, you know. So, so they are botanists. They are botanists yeah, they, in their own right. Exactly. Yeah. So I, I, I have. I'm almost disgusted sometimes when people think that science is something that's uh, away from you, something to be feared, something that uh, has a you know higher ranking because the knowledge is not understood, not, knowledge is not explained in a mm. way that you know, children can understand. Wow. So, yeah, so it's, it'll be an interesting journey. Uh, Amazing. Can you tell us a little bit more about what you're studying? Uh, because I'm excited about it. So to those of you listening in, uh, last year when uh, Nirmala Balram um, uh, shared her story, it's on my uh, YouTube channel. I've also put it on my page. So if you haven't watched that, please go and listen to that beautiful story. She shared her upbringing, her family, and all her history. It's so just so beautiful to hear. Now she's got an update for us that she's planning to do her further studies, but to do your PhD, right, Nirmala? I want to end up with that. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> so can you tell us uh, what you're planning and which university you're planning to go to? Uh, I, it's museum studies and, and I am, I have joined Victoria University. I have my third class tomorrow <laughs> online because of COVID, yeah. uh, we are studying online, but it's sort of, uh, at the moment it's revision for me and I like it because it's important to go back to the basics and then um, be able to um, read a lot read a lot that we don't have time for often and then uh, we uh, and then I finished this introductory course in June and then I've got um, I you probably know Connell McCarthy yes I do yes yes, yes. so mm -hmm. Connell is my supervisor my <laughs> wow. so he's you kind good of hands. he's amazing uh, he's awesome I know, he's amazing because I've uh, I've done science all the time. So this is like a bridging course. And then I get into the serious uh, thesis writing and see how I go, where I go. <laughs> yeah. That is so inspirational because, you know, we're celebrating International Women's Day and mm -hmm. this is Women's History Month, you know, yeah. and we've been talking on this program, just, you know, celebrating our women and the stories and you are just one of a kind. Uh, Nirmala, you know, in just the way you do things, uh, your your students love you, all the students <laughs> that were taught by you, and even now you're at the museum, and now you're planning to go again into, uh, you know, doing this study. So what are the things, what what are the motivating factors uh, uh -huh. that, that goes through your system or your thinking to take this step? It's scary. <laughs> First of all, it was very scary. Uh, well, I have had some things go on in my life, my personal uh, life that kind of uh, made me feel like I need to start a new life. And secondly, I think I've done conservation enough. I felt like uh, the technical, the science side of it was getting a bit boring. And uh, so, for, and the other thing was, I was feeling a bit unfit. So I started dancing last year. Of course, now I have to take a break from it. <laughs> I went to the teacher and I said, do you take old women in your class? And she said, of course. And secondly, I said, I want to, I want to learn dancing as an exercise and um, something to sort of help me in my balance as I age. So hand, eye, feet, all this coordination stuff. So I started doing that. Unfortunately, there's a bit of a hold up there now <laughs> with the leg, but it'll come back. And then I, like I said, I was a bit, getting a bit bored with what I was doing. And my mind was constantly wondering uh, because I studied uh, risk management of collections, uh, but in 2010 to 11, 
And to me, that was, this, that is a way I find of getting um, some of my own beliefs about um, involving the community can help. So getting them connected with risk management uh, is what I, what I kind of want. I wanted to do risk management badly, very badly. I was looking for a way to do that. And suddenly I found this way that I go back to university and uh, I do something and go around the Pacific, go around the Pacific and work with people like the uh, smaller museums, like this. I'm already working with the Langi Mama here and uh, the Samoan Museum. So the ladies there have been really enjoying uh, my chats with them. I do sort of, and lo I localize it, localize it. I don't make it sound foreign. And I think that was the key to them getting interested. So yeah, I, similarly, I want to take that Euro Europeanized Asian, oh, I didn't pronounce that well, did I? Anyway, taking those re European values uh, and modifying them, not changing them, but modifying them to suit what is um, applicable in the Pacific in the small places mm -hmm. where the resources are limited. We're constantly fighting that battle, you know, uh, money, finance, mm -hmm. people don't have money. And then so look, going out and looking for things locally, going out into the um, hardware shops, looking into the fab, clothing shops and um, like for example I don't enc I encourage them to go buy a duvet inner instead of going and buying Decron. They'll definitely find a duvet inner cheaper than buying a couple of meters mm -hmm. of Decron. All they need to do take it home give it a good wash in water and it does the same job. So that's one example but similarly I, I think we need to make uh, create that awareness that you can do it you can do it you don't need to buy expensive material so uh, some people may say I'm downplaying conservation no I'm not I think it's uh, it's just preventive conservation yes. you know the technical side can wait but the objects will be gone if we keep waiting mm. for that yeah mm. so finding immediate fulfilling immediate needs of the museums without um, making them spend too much money yes. and getting the elders involved, you know, recording it in your own and the language. Language, yes. Language. I yeah. encourage the Museum of Samoa, the staff there, I said, write it in your language. That's yeah. what your elders will understand when you go to them for help, you know. Mm -hmm. And so they've been doing it and feeling good about it, you know. So, uh, yes, so this is my own personal way of, um, yeah, leaving behind something that is uh, worthwhile, <laughs> I think. <laughs> Thank you so much. You know what, uh, the school that I went to in Fiji, which is uh, Antitakumba School, uh, yeah. the, the motto is, you know, leave the world better than you found it. Exactly. And, uh, you know, that's exactly what most of mm -hmm. us went to that school, we believe in that. Uh, yeah. You know, we try and make a difference in whatever field we are in. Uh, yeah. But for you, what you're just sharing now is so empowering that not only you are working at the Museum of New Zealand, Te Papa Tongarewa, you know, one of the amazing museums in New Zealand, but you yeah. are giving back to the Pacific and you are working yeah. with our museum staff in Samoa and working with the amazing Lani Mama, Sisters, Kolokesa. Yeah. Mahina yeah. Tuwai and Barbara Makwati Afitu. And it's just so beautiful that collaboration. Say, look at what yeah. collaboration can do. Um, yeah. so just wonderful, wonderful to, to hear. Now, for those who are listening in, I know that I noticed there's a lot of young ones uh, watching <laughs> and uh, also some young at heart. Um, yeah, but uh, <laughs> what, what would be your, your advice? Because, uh, you know, we are talking about women as well as women in science. And yeah. we looked at our amazing poster, thanks to the Ministry of Education uh, in New Zealand uh, for right. creating this beautiful poster. Uh, we were always scientists. So what would be your advice to young up and coming youths, also maybe the girls, but also the boys? Uh, what would be your <laughs> advice you know, for those who are uh, taking arts and taking science? What would be something you can encourage them with? 
I think uh, these days it's easier because you can take a combination of classes. And, um, you know, what we learned uh, later on in life is what you call applied science. Applied science, where it's not something out of this world, but it's something that's happening around you something that you apply that knowledge to you know uh, so apply and and first of the first thing like i said before apply to yourself where's the what's my biology what's my chemistry and um, what's my physics you know and and once you and the human brain is the best computer anyway no matter how many updates they make of the uh, the <laughs> metal one or whatever plastic one i think the human mind is the best computer because the human mind actually makes those computers. Yes. And, uh, mm. So yeah, they look within, look within, find yourself, find your, find yourself, and um, question. The other thing is question. If you don't understand, question. There's nothing wrong in asking questions. The worst answer you'll get is, I don't know. <laughs> So, you know, somebody once said, a teacher is someone who has read a book a generation before you. Wow. And so read, read a lot, read lo a lot as much as you can. And of course, you know, you have a dictionary. Try to understand what you're reading. And, and discussions, discussions with your colleagues, your friends, your peer group, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, it'll make people a better human being also, you know, focusing on things that uh, are about you, about mm -hmm. you as a human being, rather than in the, just the, you know, the physical appearance. Mm -hmm. uh, we have to go inwards, like you said in before and you said that too so wow. go inwards and keep looking and you'll find your goal you'll find what you want to do i think it changes also like uh, for me it's um it's constantly changing wow. and um and i don't mind i don't mind i think it's important to constantly question and change and adapt you know and the world's changing and i mean fiji being a small place it's changing so fast you know <laughs> so yeah i mean i remember as a child you know, the sugar cane for example was different and we used to be, it was easy to eat <laughs> because the skin was soft but then they did research and it was something that happened naturally in nature too and our ancestors actually noticed those things and took advantage of that but they never recorded those things you know for them it was knowledge you just pass and so people just assume that they didn't know mm -hmm. wow. Wow. and then and, and the thing that like for the youth it's important to talk to your elders they may not have gone to school mm -hmm but they have the experience, the knowledge that you will never get once they are gone. Yes. Yeah. Wow. And that think of amazing. you. Yeah, think of your ancestors, you know. They stand. Never forget that. Where you stand today is because of them. And, wow. uh, and you know, that going back to that, that old ways of doing things, you know, respecting your parents because they, you are them, you are them. And um, that's a legacy, you are the legacy, you know, rather than looking, the, I always say there's two sides to look at everything, there are two sides of the coin. And you look at yourself as the legacy they're leaving behind, mm -hmm. then you will be proud of your uh, family, your parents, you know, your ancestors. You are the present um, face of that legacy, you know? Yeah. Well, I've got um, <laughs> this Bob just hearing you say that. Oh, that is so beautiful. I remember, uh, I remember your mom. I remember your mom. I still have a little mat that she gave me, uh, and uh, you, I can, you can see that uh, you know you have been um, a good uh, 
um, what do we say? I'm lost for words now. It's such a such, something so beautiful that you know a legacy that she's left behind, you know. And uh, and I mean, she's someone I met. I don't know too much about your dad, but that's um, you know, you look within and you see that so many children these days don't want to do that, you know. Mm. So, so you get out by your parents, your grandparents, and uh, so standing out and saying, I know science, and they didn't know science. It's not on for me. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, wow. yeah. Ooh, that is so beautiful. I just love the fact that, you know, you mentioned again that we are the version of our ancestors, you know, in this generation. Um, you know, I love the fact that you mentioned here, uh, you know, the um, living the legacy. Uh, yeah. That's a, such a very powerful word, yeah? Legacy. Um, respecting your parents, uh, thinking of our ancestors. I think that's a really beautiful uh, way mm. of, uh, you know, bringing our Talanoa to a close, mm. in which you are reminding all of us that, you know, that our ancestors um, should not be forgotten. You know, they've yeah. left something mm. behind for us to step on and yeah. be better, right? Mm. Mm. They live through us. <laughs> uh, Wow, that is amazing. And for some of the teachers, there's a few that are, are connecting in here. I'll read out a comment from one of our sisters from Dubai. Uh, uh -huh. uh, she's commenting here and saying, wow, very powerful to encourage the Samoan Museum colleagues to write the information question in their language for their elders to understand. Wow. Yeah. That is amazing. And I think that is so true what you've said, you know, thinking of our ancestors, but also talking to our elders today. When you talk to them, they feel like we, we respect them. Yeah? Yep. Yeah. And them. you respect them. <laughs> wow. So it's a two-way thing. You respect them and we respect ourselves. We are them. <laughs> wow. That it's... is beautiful. That is beautiful. So to our young ones listening in, uh, I'm sure you'll remember some of the points that uh, uh, Mrs. Nirmala Balram has shared with us today. I've written a few while she was speaking. One, if I can summarize it from the beginning, as you said, find yourself. Yeah. Two, ask questions. Yeah. Three, read. The yeah. more you read, the more you know. Four, mm. you can use resources such as dictionaries to find yeah. more information about things that you don't know. Number mm -hmm. five, write about it. Wow, yeah, yeah. write about it. And I think you're absolutely right there, Nirmala, that in our generation or in our indigenous communities, we, we know a lot of things. We have a lot of things in our minds. We perform it, we sing it, right? Mm -hmm. We do it as part of our ceremonies, but we don't write it. So yeah. this is a good reminder from you, Nirmala, mm -hmm. eh? to write mm -hmm. what we know. Yes. Otherwise, people think that, you know, you don't know. <laughs> wow, that is amazing. Man, with Nakabaka Levu, Nirmala, for inspiring us today. And I know you, uh, you know, have got uh, other things that you have to do today, but I'm just so happy that you messaged me and that you wanted to, you know, share some of your, your vision and your feelings about the poster. Uh, we yeah. were always scientists and uh, you loved it so much. I could tell by your messages to me. And I'm so glad that we talked about it today. Yeah, the human part. <laughs> yes. uh, yeah. uh, man, would you like to uh, say goodbye to our listeners who are watching in from all over the world? Uh, many uh, of them just sending their best wishes to you, but would you like to say something yes. to them? Uh, thank you very much, Vinaka Bakilevu, Danbad, and it's been so lovely sharing um, my thoughts with uh, Tarisi, and if you'll, and, and it's sort of like my 19, uh, sorry, 2022 version, <laughs> and, and uh, yeah, I'd like I'd love to talk to some of you later to you know see how people feel, yes. you know. Yes, feel. Feeling is very important because then you speak from the heart, you know, you speak your ah. heart. And that's my hope and legacy that I want to leave behind and see you sometime. Yeah. Get 
touch, get in touch if you feel like it, you know, there's some question, like I said, ask questions, you know, <laughs> yeah, wow. if you don't know, if, yeah. So for those of you who are listening in, uh, if you want to get in touch with Nirmala uh, Balram, just send me a message. Uh, mm. She's a very approachable uh, lady and uh, she works at the Museum of New Zealand, Te Papa Tongarewa. Uh, she works there as a conservator. And I'm just so glad that she came on my platform today. And aren't we all blessed that she is here as a scientist, first of all, she graduated as a scientist and now she's working in the field of museum and now in her plan to do her PhD studies, she wants to bring these two worlds together, to bring mm. her world of science that she studied at school at other universities, but now she's bringing it and putting a human touch to it, yeah? Human touch and to value the stories and the histories of our people, wow. And definitely I'd love to, you know, continue another story with you sometime if you have some interesting update from Te Papa or just from you with your reading and you want to share it on my program, just message me. I'd love to host you anytime. Okay. See you. Okay. So you take care and uh, I will catch up with you. See you. <laughs> uh, to those of you listening in, uh, we're just so blessed to be connected to uh, Mrs. Nirmala Balram, and she's connecting in from the capital of New Zealand uh, in Aotearoa, the beautiful city of Wellington. And uh, uh, she is joining us with her beautiful smile, as she always shares with us, even though she said it's a, a cloudy day. But it's not cloudy at all in our talent no. session. Uh, <laughs> so we and we send all our loma to you and to the family as well. Mother Manda Nirmala. See you. Thank you so much, everybody, for listening in. And Mother Manda Nirmala. Mother Manda.